Hey, what's up you lovely learners in learning land? Tyler from 10 Thumbs Pro in the middle of two construction sites in pineapple season. Today we're gonna teach you two intermediate ragtime pieces. All the tabs on the screen, but you can get printable versions of this tab by becoming a Patreon. That's also access to all the tabs for all our tutorials. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss a lesson too. I apologize for the noise. Like I said, today's crazy. I literally do not have a roof on my house, so we're doing the best we can, but we should be back in the studio hopefully by Friday. If you're new to ragtime picking, we did two easier pieces. I will link them in the description. I'll also put my email there if you want some one-on-one -on -one lessons via Zoom or Skype. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Grab your ukulele brain attention span. Once you have those three things, follow me on in and let's play some ragtime music. Come on in, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break this down. Two pieces, both in the key of F, so let's hit the chords. Our first chord is an F major. We have a C major. Move that to the second fret, it becomes a C major seven. First fret is a C seven. And then all open is what's called a C six. This is a crazy chord called a G nine. And it's hard to see with my ring finger here, but it's the fourth fret, second fret, first fret, open, um, open A string. G9, really crazy chord, right? Okay, we're also going to add a B flat. Now, if you can't play a B flat, no worries, because we're actually only playing the two middle strings in the piece. A B chord, same thing, only these two middle strings. C chord, you guessed it, same thing, only these two middle strings. This C7 shape, which maybe you haven't seen, which is three, zero, zero, three, really nice C7 and this C7 shape, barring the third fret with our middle finger on the fourth fret of the C. We also have this F, bar the fifth fret with your pinky on here, and we're gonna move it chromatically to this E, E flat, D, and then ultimately this D7, which is barring the second fret with your middle finger on the third fret. So those are the chords. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at the first piece. Let me play it for you once and then we'll break it down. It sounds like this. Rack time. We got this sound going for us pretty constantly, which is this bass movement, right? With our thumb going and alternating on the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's constant throughout the entire piece. We're gonna play the second fret of the G, then we're gonna pinch the C on the second beat, and our pinky is gonna play the third fret down here. An F chord is an F, an A, and a C note. So you can add that C note whenever you want. So we get one, two, three, and four. This is where it gets interesting. Second fret of the G string, and then the open A on the and. This is the first bit of syncopation that we're gonna do, meaning the first time we're playing on the and. That gives these ragtime pieces movement in life. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Just practice that over and over again. Don't move on until you can play that first measure in a circle. The second measure sounds like this. A lot more syncopation, but we're also seeing how we can create syncopation with hammer-ons and pull-offs too. We make an F chord, and we get our pinky on the third fret of the E string this time. That makes an F add nine. You can add the G note to your F chord anytime you want in the key of F. And it creates this nice spacey chord called an F add nine. 
So what we're doing is starting with our F add 9 and then pulling off to the F. But it's important that that pull off happens on the AND, like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. 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 You see our thumb is still doing its thing. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're hitting the syncopation with these notes. One and two and three and four. Boom. Okay? Third measure, we get our C. But we've introduced a concept called sixth. A sixth is an interval, and we're using it to create movement and interest. We start off with our C chord. This time, the first beat is on the C string, not the G string. One and, and on the third fret of the A. And you're gonna get your index finger on the second fret here and your middle finger right here. This would technically make a C9. So once you have that shape down there, you're gonna keep your fingers down and slide them up two frets, three and four. You may have seen this in our C7 shape. It's in the C chord. And then you're going to lift your middle index finger up, push this one to five, and do five, five. So we get. For the fourth measure, nothing really spectacular. We get back to our F, we play the G and the A strings, drop down to the C, G, E, G, well, G, index will hit the E string on the AND, thumb will come down and play the open C on the fourth beat, and then your index will play the AND again. Three and four, AND. One, two, three, and four. First four measures. Next, the next four measures, we start off exactly the same. The only difference is we're playing on the and after the four. So just one extra syncopated beat. Then we get to the third measure and we have something a little different. We've added this note here to our C. This note is the G note, and a C is a C, E, G. So you can play a C with that note whenever you want. This is a B flat. It's a note that makes it a C7. And then this is what makes it a C6. So we're gonna play the open C, third fret with our ring finger, and then the third fret of the G, the bass, on the second beat. If you want, you can actually start with your fingers here and place your middle finger on the third fret of the G and your ring finger on the third fret of the E. And you just play the open C, syncopate the third fret of the E, thumb will come down and grab the third fret of the G, one and two, then you'll pinch the open C and A together, and the third fret of the E and the G together. So you get one and two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then we finish with an F, C7, F. The C7 is the five chord of the key of F, and going from a C7 to an F, or a dominant five, which is raised to the seventh, the dominant seven chord back to the one is the strongest resolution in all of music. So these four measures together we get let's put all eight of these together from the top. One, two, three, four. Intermediate piece number one. Let's take a look at intermediate piece number two. All right, so the first four measures, we can see that measures three and four of this are familiar. This is this word motif. You could even combine these two pieces to be like a verse and chorus. And consider the first piece the chorus and this the verse, or vice versa if you want. Except this piece is 16 measures, and 16 measures tend to be the verse. So 
That's what this fancy word called motif. Motif means repetition. In this kind of piece, if you're doing this with your own creative music playing, your own writing, or if you're applying these techniques to make a popular song ragtime, like a ragtime version of a Jimi Hendrix song, for example, you're going to want to establish motifs, which means parts that repeat. Your ear likes the familiarity, okay? For example, it happens more than one in for release, more than once in for release. Okay, so the first two measures are new, and they sound like this. And it's this chromatic movement through these chords. We, we start with our C, and what we do is we play the open C string, and then we pinch the third fret of the A and the open G. We then move to the second fret here, down to the C string, but this time syncopation on the A. So we get one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One. Down to the first fret of the A string now. You play the C string in the first fret of the A. And then this is important. Your thumb will want to kind of grab that open E string, but it's important that you use your index finger so your thumb can grab the bass on the G. One and two. Then we remove our index finger and do that again. One and two, three and four and. One, two, three and four. One and two, three and four and boom. Then we're back into what we know. Okay, next four piece, next four measures, excuse me. So here the first three measures are familiar because we're doing that chromatic movement again like the first one to establish our motif. Okay, so where does it get different? Right here. We're using six again, but this time we're using the sixth of the F chord. We'll play one and two, three and three of the G and the E string. And then we're going to play five and five, but not at the same time. We're going to go one and. And then after the and on the G string here, you'll use that same finger, lay it flat to grab the fifth fret of the F. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three. Well, one, two, three, and four. Okay? Go ahead and let the avocado and pineapple guy do his job, and then we'll play those four measures together. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, next four measures. Again, we see the motif. We start off the same. Oops. Now it gets really cool. We're gonna go up and make this F chord. I'm sorry about all the noise, everybody. Like I said in the intro, I'm really battling it today. I got two construction sites, one on my right, one on my left, buses, motorcycles, and the pineapple guy to compete with. Okay, so we should be back in my studio as soon as Friday. Okay, so we're going to make this F chord. We're going to play the bass, fifth fret of the C string. Then we're going to use these two fingers to pluck the E and the A. One, two. Move this whole shape, that's important, over. But you're going to use these three fingers to pluck the C, G, and E strings. Down again. One more time. And then we're going to come from here to this D7 shape, pluck the D string on the second beat, and three and four. So you get one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. If you get dead strings, try moving your finger up and down. So these two measures we get one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. Put it
it together with the intro for these four, we get one, two, three, and four, one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. Last four, we bring them up, start off familiar, and then the coolest two bars in this whole thing. We make that G9 shape I talked about at the beginning, but we're gonna play it like this. Fourth fret, second fret, first fret, open. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. So you're just gonna play these as eighth notes. One and two and three, open G, and four. First fret here, get your middle finger down to the second fret on the and. Then you'll pinch open C and E, and then you're gonna use your two middle fingers, ring finger on the third fret, and then your middle on the first fret. That's important to go and, two, and, three. Index is gonna come up and play the third fret of the G string on the third beat, three, four. And you're gonna strum through this C7 on the fourth beat. So you get one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. It's actually gonna ring through the first beat. Four, one, two, three. You'll hit it on the second beat and then come up and play this F on the third beat. So these three measures, really slow. One and two and three. speed very very cool okay so these four measures and remember swing is important here So let's go ahead and play all 16 of these from the top. One, two, three, four. So cool. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tolerating the noise. Catch you next Wednesday or Saturday for next lesson. Take care. Cool, everyone. Thank you so much for watching to the very end of the lesson here at 10thumbspro.com. We really do appreciate you. Thank you for your patience, too. I know this isn't the ideal some circumstances, but the show must go on. I'm just glad that we were able to get this lesson in. I actually filmed it three times, and believe it or not, the sound quality was worse the first two times. All right, everybody, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to my Patreons. Thank you for thinking about becoming a Patreon. And until next time, keep on rocking and rolling. Keep on loving life. And we'll catch you next Wednesday or next Saturday for our next lesson. Take care. Have a lovely day. Rock and roll.